Welcome to this training video about Administer Governance and Compliance. This learning module is part of AZ104 training for Azure Administrators. This module belongs to the learning path on managing identities and governance in Azure. My name is Navneet Kumar. I am a Microsoft Certified Trainer and I am doing a series on AZ104 training. As I was getting lots of requests from the students that please do a training series on uh, the certification or role-based certification programs. So I thought of doing this series. If you are preparing for AZ104 as your administration certification, then you are at the right place. You will get all the useful resources in the description of the video as well. If you have not subscribed to my channel, please do subscribe that and hit the bell icon to get the notifications about my latest videos. Without any further ado, let's get started with the training. Learning objectives of this training video are configuring the subscriptions in Azure, configuring Azure policies for the governance purpose and configuring the role-based access control for delegation of control to the users or groups. There are two labs as part of this. Number one, managing subscriptions and the RBAC. Number two, manage governance via Azure policies. Talking about configuring subscriptions and configuring the Azure resources using Resource Manager. Here is the list of the topics as part of this first uh, lesson or module. Number one, identify the regions. Microsoft has 60 plus regions around the globe. Which region can be a suitable region for your workload deployment? How do you choose that? Number two, implement as your subscriptions. As your subscriptions or as your accounts are the billing boundaries and the administrative boundaries. So the tenants are billed on these subscriptions based on the consumption of the resources. Number three, identify subscription usage. How do you check the usage? the billing of your subscriptions. Obtain a subscription. How do you obtain the subscription? What are the different offers that are made by Microsoft? We have uh, uh, more than a dozen of Azure offers. So we will look into that. Next is creating resource groups, which is a container, a logical container of resources that helps into the delegation of control and the assignment of the policies. Determine the service limits and the quota because Microsoft Azure is a public cloud. So it has the service quota limits. Some quota limits are soft quota limits that can be increased by making a request to Microsoft or some may have the hard limits. But there are limits on the services for the tenants to consume and that is required because it's a public cloud service and offered to everyone. Create an Azure resource hierarchy will be the next topic where I'll be talking about the management groups. How do we use them to manage the subscriptions? Enterprises use multiple subscriptions because of different business units or the separation of duties. They need to have the different uh, departments and for that they need the different subscriptions. So how do we manage those multiple subscriptions or these resources in a hierarchy? So we'll be talking about that. Next is applying, applying the resource tags. Tags are very important in terms of uh, identifying the resources or labeling the resources from costing perspective, from performance or for performance tuning or for finding or categorizing or classifying the resources. This can help you in labeling those resources. It's nothing but a key value pair that is associated with the resources. Next is managing cost. I'll be talking about that. And finally, there will be learning recap on this lesson. This covers 20 to 25% of managing the, uh, the, the manage as your identities and governance. This, this entire topic covers the 20 to 25% of this exam of AZ104. Uh, we'll be talking about configuring resource logs, applying and managing the tags on the resources, manage resource groups, managing subscriptions, costs, using alerts, budgets, advisors, to get the recommendations and act on those recommendations for cost optimization or for performance tuning or operational excellence of the uh, workloads running in the cloud. Configuring the management groups for organizing the subscriptions. 
Talking about the Azure regions, these Azure regions are the geolocations and Microsoft has 60 plus regions across the globe. In six different regions you or geographies of uh, the world, you see, I mean, in the seventh uh, geolocation, Antarctica, we don't have the region, but yeah, in rest of the six regions, you will find the uh, the Microsoft data centers or its uh, regions, geolocations, be it North America, South America, Africa, or Asia Pacific, UK Europe, or Australia. You see those uh, regions deployed uh, across these uh, geographies, and uh, there are 60 plus regions worldwide as we see and they represent to 140 countries. Some countries have more than two or uh, at least two regions because of the uh, data sovereignty and to keep the data within that geopolitical boundary. A region represents a collection of data centers. This region can be as big as a football ground and uh, it has a set of data centers, multiple data centers within it. It provides the flexibility and the scale for your business. It preserves the data residency. Select the regions close to your users to offer them the better performance. Because your users will be accessing the workloads or the applications or resources over the internet or maybe private network they are accessing, it is better to figure out your user base first where from the users will be accessing the application and then hosting the applications to the nearby location will help into uh, improved performance or efficiency. Be aware of region deployment availability where you deploy the resources in particular region. That region may have some sort of limitations on the resources as well or services they don't have. So do a, do a thorough study about that as well, that whether the service you're looking for is available in that region or not. There are global services that are region independent. They don't depend on the uh, regions. They can be deployed without that. So because these resources are accessed globally, most regions are paired for high availability. So these regions have been paired within the geopolitical boundary wherever possible or within that geography itself. So they have been paired for the redundancy, for the uh, durability of your data to increase by replicating this workload to the secondary region. So we have the pairing of the regions, the primary and the secondary regions. I will be putting the reference links into the description of the video. Do not forget to visit the description of this video where you will find lots of useful resources and you can do a deep dive into any of the particular um, terminology or a concept that is new to you. Talking about the subscriptions in Azure, an Azure subscription is an account that you need to take or create for consuming the resources in Azure. This Azure subscription is associated with an intra tenant. This intra tenant was formerly known as uh, uh, Azure Active Directory, uh, which is responsible to protect the access to the resources, these cloud applications or services. So in nutshell, the Azure subscriptions are protected by intra ID and uh, you need to create and manage these security principles in this intra ID so that you can delegate the access to these security principles. These security principles can be the users, can be the uh, service principles, managed identities, or the devices. We can have the logical units of Azure services that is linked to the Azure account. Security and billing boundary. As I mentioned earlier, that the Azure subscription is a billing and administrative boundary. Well, you can delegate the access at the subscription level, the person or administrator you gain, you provide access on a particular uh, subscription will be limited to that boundary or to that subscription. So in that way, it can be a administrative boundary. And also each subscription has a separate billing. Organizations sometimes use multiple subscriptions to keep a track on billing as well for different departments or different business units they have. Well, you, ha you are one as your tenant 
and you have one Azure account where you can have different subscriptions for different workloads to deploy, be it dev, test or production workloads you want to deploy. So you can have more than one subscriptions within your organization and they are associated either all of them on the same tenant or maybe at different tenants for separations of duty. You need to increase the soft quota limit on your subscriptions. Then you can go to the Azure portal, search for the subscription service, go to your subscription where you want to raise this quota request. For an instance, I choose my Azure Pass sponsorship subscription and uh, go to the settings blade here where you have usage plus quota option and uh, therefrom you can create a quota request for a particular service that you want to increase the quota limit. 